Good morning, Kensington. We're so glad you're here today. If we haven't met, my name is Jesse Allen, and I'm Student Ministries Director at the Orient Campus. Today, we're beginning a new series called Above All. Let me ask you, what does above all mean? What's the most vital of all? That's what this series is about. In the Bible, Peter makes a powerful statement that begins above all, which is followed by three action steps. Number one, love others deeply. Number two, use your gift. And number three, serve in strength. This three-week series will help us focus on ways we can serve and love those right next to us as well as those around the globe. The other opportunity we have coming up is the Hope Water Project 5K and Fun Run. Metro Detroit campuses are invited to join us for the special event at the Troy campus on June 4th. And our Traverse City campus is holding their Hope Water Project 5K on July 20th. Before I get into the details of the event, let's talk about the why. Why has our church community supported Hope Water Project for such a long time? Over 14 years. It started with a special friendship between Kensington founder Steve Andrews and his friend Julius Murgor, who is from the Pokot region of Western Kenya. In time, hundreds of people from our community committed to the mission of bringing clean water to the Pokot people. I haven't had the opportunity to go to Kenya, but I have seen the images and the video of the harsh, dry land. It's amazing to see the hope that comes from having fresh water. With it, everything and everyone can thrive. Schools and churches can be built and communities can grow. So whether you're a runner or not, this 5K and fun run has a place on your calendar. We're looking for runners, joggers, and walkers who will participate in the race as well as fundraise. We're also looking for businesses to sponsor the event, and we'll need volunteers too. Both race events include a community barbecue afterwards to replenish all of those burnt calories. This is a fun time for the whole family, and you'll be changing the lives of families in Kenya at the same time. Find out more at kensingtonchurch.org 5K. Now let's get back to the service and see what God has to say to us this morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Good. Hey, I'd love to invite you to stay in and worship with us this morning as we get started. So let's sing this out together. the heart of worship I'm bringing in a brand new song I'm ready to see the unthinkable and I'm ready for a miracle hearts praying for a fresh encounter souls looking to the living God I'm ready for a real revival oh Holy Spirit come like the
beautiful. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you. I hear you. Thank you. Listen, uh, it is always just such a joy and a privilege to get to worship with you guys, and we're going to keep going. We got another song for you this morning. Um, It's a new one for us in this community called Back to Life. And uh, some of you have been coming for a while and maybe more regularly have noticed on the first Sunday of every month, we do something here at the Clarkson campus called Transformation Sunday. Because we believe it is so important for us to hear from members of our community that are exper- have experienced that transformation in Jesus or are currently experiencing transformation in Jesus because that's what he's always doing. It's why we come here every morning is to celebrate and worship and learn from and be in awe of his power. Because what he's inviting us to, right, is that life of resurrection from death to life. That is what he does. And that's what we're gonna sing in this song is that he brings us from death to life. And I love this line. It says, just like Lazarus, you bring me back to life. You brought me back to life. He will call us by name. That's what he's doing right now. Maybe you don't know it but he is calling you by name and he is saying, wake up, come back to life. That's what he's inviting you to. So I'd love to encourage you, like maybe you just wanna let this wash over you and listen to it and experience and maybe hear God call your name and maybe you will just wanna worship even if you don't know the words, but let's celebrate and be present in the power of Jesus' love for us, amen? All right, here we go. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been bound again, my heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind, hallelujah, you brought me back. forget the moment I heard you call my name and out of the grip of darkness into the light of grace just like Lazarus oh you brought me back to life and where there was dead religion now there is living faith all of my hope and freedom are found in Jesus' name, just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life, for no longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I To that empty grave And just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life No longer I who live But Christ in me For I've been born again My heart is free The hope of heaven before me take all eternity just like Lazarus oh you brought me back to
Interesting the scripture. Paul says in Galatians 2, and you can you can have a seat. It says this, verse 20 it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives inside of me. The life I now live in this body, he says, it seems like it's your own life, and like it's you and I walking around. He said, It's not there, you're disillusioned. He says, What you're actually seeing, the life I now live in this body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Is that good news or what, man? It's incredible. I'm telling you, when we look around, we wanted to stop this morning and and pray for our community, pray for our country. We look at things in New York just yesterday in Buffalo, the shooting. It's like, when does this stuff stop? When we stop living for ourselves, when we humble ourselves before Jesus Christ said, I'm no longer going to live, but would you live in me? Because if you live in me, my life will change forever. If you live in me, the world will begin to change forever for the better. Do you see? Because Jesus is the bringer of forgiveness. He's the bringer of joy. He is the bringer of redemption. You and I, no. I mean, I, I love you and we love each other. But let me tell you something. We fall short every time. But Jesus Christ, when we get out of the way and said, would you live in me? everything changes. And so let's pray for that today as a community here online for our country and say, what would it look like? God, could you give us a vision in our life and in our community's life in our country, Father, this world, what it would look like that if we would step out of the way, let our pride fall to the wayside and humble ourselves before you, that your life, your goodness, your peace, your power might live inside of us. Then we'll begin to see the world as you want it. Father, I pray for that today. I pray for our kids in kids ministry. I pray for our students. I pray for us here as adults. I pray online. Father, I pray in this country as people mourn and they hurt. God, we need less of us and more of you. We need to become lower, God, that you might become higher inside of us. And the crazy thing is you say that when we do that, you actually will lift us up. Father, so today we want to be humble-hearted before you. That Jesus, it's not us that live, but it's you, Jesus Christ, that lives inside of us because you loved us and you gave your life for us. May you help us and bless us today, Father. May you show us the beauty of who you are. May you awaken our hearts. May you give us hope that allows us to leave this place believing that Jesus Christ changes everything. May you do that. In your name we ask, and everybody said, amen. I uh, are excited about this series. We're, we're stopping in First Peter, uh, and, and, and verse uh, chapter four, and we're going to start today in verse eight. And there's this verse that says, "I'm going to share the video with you," but it says, "Above all, love each other deeply." Why? Because love covers over a multitude of sins, which means issues and problems and things that are disastrous, and and then to offer hospitality. To one another without grumbling. That's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Uh, to do that. I just want to show you a quick video, just a, a snapshot of we love to be able to serve around here, but we don't serve for religion's sake or serve to make people happy. We want to learn today that when we're serving and giving and showing hospitality to others, that we're doing it from this beautiful place of knowing how loved we are, that when we're loved, we naturally love others well. And so check this out just for a minute about uh, what it looks like to serve around here. Hey everybody, it is Taylor Leal and we are gonna be talking to some of our volunteers today who we appreciate and love so much. We're here to interview some volunteers about how they feel about volunteering. Here's one right here. Hello, sir. Hi. How do you feel about your donut? 
Good. Hey everyone, my name's Sam Frangioni. We are here talking to some of our awesome team here, some of our great volunteers, and also enjoying some of the best coffee around. Would you say based on the looks that Birmingham campus has the best coffee? I would say that you have the best coffee. I'm a tea drinker because we do serve tea as well, and I go for the chamomile or maybe even the English breakfast. I heard they don't they don't give out tea at uh, Birmingham. Oh, we have like eight flavors. Oh. Maddie. Uh -huh. How much do you love serving in K-Kids here at Orient? I love it with all my heart. Why? Because I love hanging out with kids mm. and teaching the gospel. And what's your favorite part about serving with middle school students? Um, well, I think it's we both learn from each other, and so I think that's a really cool concept where we're kind of like diving into emotions and things like that, and so we're kind of learning from each other, so I really enjoy that. Kids just have so much fun and be filled with joy when they learn about God and seeing them like realize that God is always with them and just seeing that realization just brings me so much joy. I'm the, f I call it the first line. I get to meet everyone as they come in first and hopefully I'll make a good impression and they enjoy coming to service. People, when they walk into a, to, to church, they want that first connection of feeling good about themselves. Sure. We bring that to people. I, we love people. I think it's most important that when you when you treat people with respect, with dignity, yeah. they're gonna feel good going in. They can't wait to go inside to, to see the message and to yeah. listen to the music. And, they, and we want to make them good feel morning. Well, welcome. Good morning, welcome, welcome. Do you guys feel a sense of community being on this team? We do. Yeah, it's nice to be one of the first people that get to greet people as they come in. You serve on the kids' worship team, right? Yes. What do you like about it? Well, I like that I get to um, dance, and dancing is my number one favorite thing. James is a part of our worship team here. James, what do you what do you love about being a part of our team? It's the people, man. Yeah, it's the people, everybody. Since I came here around Thanksgiving time, everybody uh, just open just open arms. Everyone's just welcoming. What's your favorite part of the job? Um, just when the kids come in and being able to love on them and just see how their day, you know, let, let them get warm into the room and feel comfortable being in here. The babies, just being able to love on them while their parents are away and, and knowing that they are comfortable and they can go worship and babies are good. I served down with the 15 month to the th three year olds. Bet you guys didn't think that's what he was gonna say. That's amazing, how many, how many other men serve with you? I haven't seen one in a few years. I just like having the opportunity to meet new faces. I'm new to the church, and it provides an opportunity to serve the Lord and meet new people. And they asked, like, what is your gift? The first time, a long time ago, I, I'm like, I don't have a gift. And then they said, That's my cousin true. said, well, you like coffee. And I started the coffee ministry. And now I realize what my gift is because I love people and I love talking to people. Any advice for maybe a new volunteer who is stepping in this week, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them just like get started. Like it may be like in a little intimidating at first, but um, once you get more comfortable, like it, it just becomes so much fun. If people were new to Kensington or maybe they've been here for a while and they're trying to find a way to get plugged in, would you recommend volunteering? I'll tell you what, we have such a big church, you can get lost in it. And as soon as you volunteer and you start meeting people in small groups and volunteering for one of our areas, you're gonna get so much more out of this. That's awesome, isn't it? It's cool, man. We're talking about that today. I wanna to tell you, thank you so much for those that serve and volunteer around here. Many are in the back with the kids right now. And other programming, and it would be impossible without you. So we're super grateful for you uh, in a huge way. And as we get started today uh, talking about this, I just want to thank you, too, for generosity. You know what's been cool around here is we, um, as we take offering, the way we do that, it's almost 100% digital. Uh, many of you give online, and you can text to do that. You can go to our app to do that. Uh, and it's exciting. Some of the things that you know when you're giving into, again, it's not programs but people. Uh, and we are just watching God move powerfully through our kids' ministry, man, through student ministry. They've gotten some incredible things coming up. 
mission trips and all sorts of stuff. And so I just want you to know it's making a huge difference. There's also those two different boxes in the back. Uh, they kind of almost blend in under the exit signs over there if you did bring a check or cash or something or if you just absolutely are against online giving like my dad. Um, that's totally okay. I'm just kidding. He still thinks there's a big conspiracy around there, but I don't know, you know. So, uh, but thank you for your generosity. You know what's been super cool too? I just want to tell you this. Every week at Clarkston campus, we've had new people signing up to give for the first time, which here's what makes it so cool. It means that God has been moving in their heart and they're beginning to call this place home. Uh, they want to be generous to the movement of what Jesus Christ Christ is doing. So it's super, super cool, man, what's happening. And so this verse today we're talking about saying, uh, what does it look like uh, to love and to serve? And Peter's talking about, man, we need to be serving, but he wants to help us understand where it comes from. So he says, above all, like above all else, if you've heard nothing else I've had to say today, I want you to hear this. Above all, Above all, above everything else I've said, I've taught about, I've done, I've illustrated, I've shared with you a story I've told, something you've witnessed says, above all, love each other deeply. Not just like, oh, I love you, but love each other deeply. Love each other well. Love each other sacrificially. Why? Because love covers over a multitude of sins. And then he says, when you get that, because in life, we have issues. We have issues within families. We have issues within relationships. We have issues within our borders. We have issues outside of our borders. We have issues all over the place, right? He says that love covers over, which is not just saying it hides or brushes it under the rug or, or, or just like turns, you know what I mean, a deaf ear to it or, or, or turns its, its head from it. It actually covers it over, Jesus says, and it makes it white as snow. So we become from unrighteous to righteous. We become from unlovable to super loved by God. It says love restores, redeems, and transforms. And then when love does its work, he says offer hospitality to one another. I love he throws in without grumbling. <laughs> it's like, because if people have done that in serving, like, yeah, I got to, oh, you know what I mean? It's almost like, well, don't serve, man. Don't do this. No, I, I, I got to. They need it, you know. It's like, well, they may not need that intense, you know, from you. They probably need a little love, <laughs> too. So we want love to do its work because otherwise it's just a religious work. When it becomes a supernatural, Holy Spirit-driven, relational work that love is doing inside of you, the offering of hospitality is an amazing thing. And Peter, when he was talking about this, he was getting to the point of saying, if somebody needs a place to live, let them come live with you. If they need a meal to be had, please make them a meal. If they need clothes on their back, give them to them. Jesus says this. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you came to visit me, right? He says these things. He says, and when you do this to others, you're actually doing it to me. You're communing with God in the most powerful and present way you possibly could through serving. But the serving is an outpouring and overflow of the work that love first does in our life. And it's amazing how this works with love, isn't it? I mean, we just stop and think about it. Like, think about the different things. Like, did you know that, and I Googled this, so I don't know if I take it serious or not, but there are over 100 million love songs that have been recorded uh, that Google has tracked. Not just like by main artists, but by people that just want to get on and write a love song to their wife. Does anyone know what the greatest love song is of all time? You can shout it out if you know. Well, you guys need to be listening to love songs a whole lot more than you are. Okay, we need a lot of love in this place. Jesus, help us today. I will always love you by Whitney Houston. Supposedly the, I don't know, this is Google, but, right? And some of you now are disagreeing. That's not the greatest love song ever, you know? I don't know, whatever. But it's just this reality of how many there. And it's amazing, Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but I do not have what? Love. He says, man, it's only like a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. He says this is like the primary force. It's part of the ingredients that God is made of. John says that God is love. He's equated to love. When we understand what love is, love is truth. It is grace. It is sacrifice. It is, comes in many shapes and forms. But love is this driving, catalytic, supernatural, Holy Spirit-driven force that's supposed to be inside of the church, inside of you and I. It actually is. If you know Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit's already at work, and it's up to us to pay attention and humble ourselves to that work that he wants to do inside of us. It's amazing how love works. Love causes us to want to serve. Love causes us to want to give and to have an outpouring. Love causes us to want to offer hospitality. When Marie and I first got married, we got, uh, we got married. We met and got married nine months, and uh, we went to our honeymoon at Sandals. Man, it was awesome. And I remember when her and I, we had our suitcase, 
we bust open the door and we're getting ready to walk through the door and I'm thinking like make out session. You know, like I'm a newlywed, man. And we get in, I look over to Maria and I'm like, isn't this, people are clapping. <laughs> and I get in there and, I, and I'm pumped and I look over and she goes, burst into tears, man. I go, what's the matter? She goes, I don't know, I'm just, I'm away from my parents first time. Oh, I, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, and so I'm like, I grabbed her suitcase and I unpacked everything. I set it up. You know what I mean? I tried to offer as much hospitality as possible. And little did I know that was just like a precursor of the next 18 years, you know, uh, getting me ready. I'm just kidding. I just, that's a cheap shot and I'm going to get beat up by every lady in here later. So, but you know, I'm like, man, but love causes you to want to do whatever. It causes you to want to go the extra mile. And there's a part of me at times, I'm a high feeler and a romantic at heart and an out loud processor. There's times where yesterday Maria goes, oh my gosh, I need some space. Just, I, I want to hear what you're saying. Just not right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> can you say it over there for me? And I'm in my, in her defense, I am processing out loud too much. And so, but this love, I was thinking to myself, I, I want to feel that same feeling. I want that burn. I want the work of love inside of my heart and soul to cause me to want to give hospitality at that level to my wife, to my children, to our community, Right. And it's something, if I try to do it on my own, it's not going to work. But if I do it through the power of the Holy Spirit, if I do it through what Peter is talking about, because Peter is on fire, but you have to remember he abandoned Jesus. He denied Jesus three times when Jesus needed him most. And Jesus comes back and does this remarkable work of unconditional love. At the end of John uh, 21, it says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you? And, and Peter's like, yes, yes, yes. And finally, Jesus brings him to this place of unconditional love. It transforms Peter forever. And now Peter's sharing with us, not just this letter in this moment 2,000 years ago, but in real time right now, because the word of God is alive and powerful. It is from everlasting to everlasting. It is at work all times, 24-7, 365, since the eons of beginning of time, it has been at work, okay? I believe that. I want to encourage you to lean into that and say, is the word of God that powerful? I'm convinced it is. And so here we are. We're looking, and I want to break down this verse. Above all, love each other deeply. Above all, this idea. And here's the deal. What motivates us to serve others? What motivates us to serve others? Love. You can say it. Today we're a little quiet. It's, it's not like, you know, a gift card or anything else. It's, it's love, ultimately, that's causing us to do this. And this first part of the verse, above all, love each other deeply. Now, here's the truth. It's hard to love people at times, don't you think? Have you ever had a hard time wanting to love somebody? <laughs> this morning, maybe. Be honest. <laughs> right? It's hard at times. Maybe it was in driving or it was in your home or wherever, you know? And it was when you walked in. Uh, and everybody always makes their way to the, uh, the coffee bar because the coffee, it's like the, it's like the drug dealer of Sunday morning church kind of, man. <laughs> Getting the caffeine in there. And, um, and I heard that hot chocolate coffee is a big deal. And so, and when it's not available... There's some grumpiness, you know, <laughs> that goes on. But we, we love each other deeply. But how do you do that? You have to first be loved. You can't give what you don't got. You can't be from a place of overflow and really love people with genuine love and sacrifice and endearment if you don't feel it in your own life. It's interesting in the scriptures, we just look through the scriptures and understand that you were loved from the beginning. You were loved from the very get-go. Look at this. In says, Psalm, David says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And he says, I know that full well. And he's not just talking about the works of creation. And it's beautiful. I saw many of you yesterday post on social media, man. Look at like the, the sunset. There's a sunrise. I mean, it's all this amazing stuff. But David's referring, he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. David was flawed. He was a mess. He was of many things. But he says, above all those, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by you, God, before your mother or your father ever met eyes, and there was a twinkle in their eyes, and, and, and you were a product of that. God was dreaming of you and thinking about you. Says Jeremiah, before the foundations of the world, that he knew you and he set you apart for work, that he loves you. When you stop and consider this, psychologists say some of the biggest things in the world that people always ask is, uh, what am I here for? My purpose, right? Uh, uh, who am I? My identity. But the biggest thing that it comes from is, where do I come from? Where are my origins? Who created me? Whose family do I belong to? This is where the rootedness of identity really begins and comes from. 
And so this David is saying, I want you to know so, I want you to know something today. David's like speaking to us through scripture. I want you to know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not a mistake. You are not forgotten about. You are not marred. You are, you are not like pushed to the wayside. You are not less than. Uh, you are none of those things. He says, you were fearfully and wonderfully made, which is an amazing thing. And do we know that? And it's amazing, like when you're falling in love with somebody, you begin to ask, like, hey, how, uh, this is going pretty good. How much do you, do we really like each other. How much do you like me? I like you a lot. How much is a lot? Like a lot, a lot, you know? And, and then finally it's like, well, do you love me? I'm like, do you love me? And it's like, well, I don't know. I mean, kind of, you know what I mean? And it's like, finally it's like, I love you. And it's like, I love you too. You know, it's like this amazing bonding moment of, of love. It's, you know, so, but it feels so good because nobody wants to be vulnerable and say, I love you first. I love you that way. But here's what's so beautiful about Jesus. He says, we love, 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first, what? Loved us. It's amazing when somebody looks at you. This might freak out if somebody comes up and Kroger and does this and looks and says, hey, man, I want you to know something. I unconditionally love you. You might, you might say, I need you to unconditionally stay away from me, you know, for a minute. But like to feel that level of love, being unconditionally, well, unconditionally, what? No, unconditionally. We love because he first loved us. This work of love does something inside of us. You have to understand, Peter's not just giving a mandate and saying, love deeply. It's impossible, Peter. We've tried. We saw you tried. He goes, I know, and I failed. But let me tell you something. This guy named Jesus, he came back to me, and he restored me, and he redeemed me, and I bowed down before him. I humbled my life to him, and it's no longer me that lives, like the song earlier, but it's Christ that lives inside of me. It's the Son of God living inside of me because he gave himself for me. He died for me, man. He unconditionally loves me. And now this work of love is doing a work inside of me. And so I'm encouraging you, let the work of Jesus Christ move inside of you, powered by the Holy Spirit, inspired by Holy Scriptures, right? Motivated as we gather together, as we worship, as we serve, as we do these things. Let the work of love do its thing, man, and it'll cause you to love one another deeply. This is a big deal. And here's what's amazing about it. For God so loved the world. Well, how did he love us? Romans says this. You see, just at the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. When we are powerless, have you ever felt powerless? Think about even the way a parent loves a child when they're powerless. They can't change their own diaper. And and you see the parent up there and the parent saying, did you poopy? Did you poop? You know what I mean? And they're all like pumped up about this moment. It gets old after about like, you know, I don't know, seven diapers into it or something. You're like, oh my gosh, did you poop again? Right? But we're, we find the parent this way, and it's amazing. And God's like, I love you that way. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is a big deal. Think about 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not prideful. It's not self-seeking. It's keeping no record of wrongs. This is the way that Jesus Christ is loving you. What about, no, it's keeping zero records of wrongs. It's not doing that at all. It's not doing that. But what it does do is it protects, it trusts, it perseveres, it hopes. Isn't this beautiful what love is doing in us? And you may say, man, I need more of that. Here's the good news. It's free. The gospel is free. The work of Jesus Christ is not something you have to earn. It's something that's given to you and I. And we begin to just humble ourselves before God and say, God, will you do a work in me? Man, because I'm trying so hard on the outside. And God's like, man, quit trying. I love you. Let me do this work inside of you so you can actually do what Peter's talking about, which is love deeply others. And some of you might say, I'm too far gone to be loved. I want to show you. There's always this response to the inner monologue in our heart that's represented in our mind from our soul of when we feel guilt and we feel shame and we feel no good. Look what it says. It says, no. Like, like, what if I'm too far gone to be loved? And, and, and Paul is crying out in Romans 8, no. He says, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, uh, that none of them, neither the present nor the future, nor powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the what? Love of God that is found in who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's like, if you're looking for love, look no further than the person of Jesus. And God is saying, if you're looking for religion, if you're looking for spirituality, and you want to know God, Jesus says, if you want to know the Father, look at me. And then when you look at Jesus, you see the fullness of God in him. And the fullness of God comes in the formation of love, patience, and kindness, and goodness, and gentleness, and forgiveness, and mercy, and meekness. Like, these are the intangibles that we spend our whole life trying to obtain. And we cannot. 
That's why Paul says, I've tried to obtain this and I couldn't do it, but I finally found it in Christ. And he actually obtained me. He loved me first. Like this is the beauty of the love story of God toward us. Graham Cook says something pretty amazing as a pastor. He says, there's nothing you could do to make God love you more. Do you hear that? There's nothing you could do to make God love you more. What if I serve today? What if I sign up and serve? I want you to because I want you to experience the fellowship of people. I want you to use your gift. I, I want the Holy Spirit to move in you. I want you, I want you to serve on a coffee team or I want you to serve in camp. I want you to do that because I think that love is doing a work inside of you and, and it, and it come outpours. But I want you to know a truth about it. There's nothing you could do to make God love you more. Because some of you are here right now, some are online, and they're striving, and they want to be loved more, and they're trying to look a certain way, and they're trying to be a certain way, and they're trying to project a certain image, they're trying to keep a certain social status, they're trying to keep themselves in a super uh, high-level financial, socioeconomic climate, and they're thinking all these things will allow me to be loved more, they'll give me fulfillment, they won't. There's nothing you could do to cause God to love you more. And Romans says, while you were powerless and you were still sinning and you were ungodly, which means separated from God's love, God was pursuing you. For God so loved the world that he gave, not for God so loved the world that he sat back and did nothing and said they stink. And wouldn't that be terrible? But we feel like that sometimes, don't we? We do. And religion can make us feel like that. Or maybe the way people have talked to us or people have talked down to us or the way that you were raised. There's something in your history, in your story, that has caused you to think that. And I'm telling you, there's nothing you could do to make God love you more. And here's the even better news. There's nothing you could do to make God love you less. Yeah, but you have no idea what I've done. Yeah, but you don't understand what happened to me. Yeah, but you don't, you don't understand the love of God. There's no height, no depth. Demons, angels, nothing can separate you from what? God's love. Isn't that like the kind of love story you want to be part of? That no matter where you go, you're like, man, they're coming for me. Like, don't you love that in part of a movie when someone gets like kidnapped or something crazy happens or whatever, you know? And and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like Liam Nielsen. He's like, I want you to know I've got a special set of skills. I've got, like, this is God. And he's like, I'm coming for you. And on the other line, the enemy's like, crap, dang it. (laughs) You know? They try to act cool, but they're shaking in their boots. Man, this is who God is. He's amazing. He's unbelievable. Like, God is coming for it. There's nothing you do to make God love you more or less. Here's what's so beautiful, too, I want to show you. In Romans 10, I know I'm giving you more scripture, but I want to give evidence. I want the power of a supernatural scripture to do work inside of you and I today. And I want you to know the story of God is one of love. It's really incredible. It says, this in Romans 2, 4b, it says, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. God's goodness and his love and his kindness, man, it's, it's just like, it's, it's like coming after us. It's amazing and it's causing us to repent. A lot of people say, what is the word repentance? It always got this crazy connotation. Repentance means I was going one way, but I've turned and I'm going another way now. I, I, I was going here and looking for love. I was going here and I was feeling shame. I was going here and I was buried under a mountain of guilt of maybe some things I did that worked, that were hurtful, that were painful, or things that were done to me, and it, I feel condemned. And you're not understanding the voice of God is saying, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. I came to seek and save those that are lost. You look lost. You look hurt. You look in pain, and I want you to repent. I want you to turn from this way going here. I want you to know that some of you might be dead in your trespasses, but Jesus says, I want to wake you up, make you alive by the power of my Holy Spirit, the work I've done on the cross, and I want to bring you over here. And what's so beautiful is what begins to draw us is the goodness of God, not the fear of God where we're like afraid he's going to punish, he's going to hurt, he's going to do this. And there's a reality. It says the wages of sin is death, but there's life in Jesus Christ, and he's drawing us to us because his heart is full of goodness for you and I. Do you see this? And he's pulling us here and he wants us to do this. And here, here's what's amazing as we, as we go through this. That you are loved, man. You are absolutely so unbelievably loved. It, it's crazy. It, and love causes us to want to serve. Love causes us to want to do things that we never would normally do on our own. Because when you are loved deeply, it causes you to do great things. When you are loved deeply, it makes you feel strong and secure. When you are loved deeply, it gives you courage to take a risk and a chance, doesn't it? Can you imagine if you're getting ready to take the biggest step of your life and the person you love the most looked at you and you said, you got zero chance of making this happen. I don't know why you're doing it. (laughs) Or or can you imagine, would you not want to like shove them? Or can you imagine if they looked at you and said, I want to tell you something. I believe in you. I believe you were created to do this. I love you. Even if you fail, I'm going to help you fail forward. I'm going to help you get back up. I'm going to be there with you. Even to the ends of this earth, I'm going to be there with you. I'm not going to give up on you. If you deny me, I'm going to find you. 
If you, if you, if you get mad at me, I'm going to forgive you. If, you, if you. if you hate me, I'm going to love you more. Don't, I mean, there's a part of us that's like, that kind of love doesn't work in us, doesn't it? That's that work that Jesus Christ is doing. I watched my, my, my mom and my grandmother, who my grandmother ended up with Parkinson's later on in her life, but I watched my grandmother love my mom so well. My grandma was amazing. She was the one that had like the, 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 the tight perm and it was kind of purplish a little bit, you know, in her later years. And she used to drive us to school sometimes. And man, I was like, she could barely get us over the steering wheel. And we'd pull into this place called Springfield Christian on Dixie's five lanes, middle turning lane. And she'd sit there and she'd wait for the traffic to come. And I could, she'd have a line building up and people would be honking the horns. Because that's what people do. When people are pulling into Christian schools or churches, they're always the rudest, isn't it? Like, what is our problem? Why don't people want to come to our church? Because we're jerks sometimes. <laughs> Stop. Let love do a work, you know? Because um, it covers a multitude of issues. And finally, my grandma would sit there and she'd go, oh, dear Jesus. And she'd just go for it. I'm like, dear Lord. <laughs> We'd have the most supernatural, powerful moments praying to God in those moments, you know, getting in. And finally, she'd like pull up in this big old blue car, man, and let us out. And she'd like, have a good day. And I'm like, thanks, grandma, <laughs> you know? But I, I, I watched how much she loved us and loved you, Mom. And I can remember you loving her, going there and loving her when she had Parkinson's. And lo, lo, love, like, compels us to love back. Like, there's a re- reciprocity to love. It's not required with Jesus. He unconditionally loves you and I. Unconditionally. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. It's unmerited favor. It's grace. It's what it is. There's nothing you do to make him love you less, but man, he desires to have reciprocity with you and I. And that work that love's doing inside of us is a community. Can you imagine what that would look like in your marriage? Can you imagine what that actually looks like in your parenting? To have that level of unconditional love, to have the level of grace that is unmerited favor you offer to people that have hurt you, mercy given to people that don't deserve it, A patience that you don't feel like you have, but it's there. A goodness that God begins to compel inside of your soul in the very depths of it. Maybe causes you to stop at Kroger and get somebody a card you don't want to get a card for. It's not even the act of doing it. It's the goodness of Jesus Christ inside of you that's doing this. Do you see? He's moving in us. Above all, love each other deeply. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sins. The issues, the pains, the unforgiveness, the the dissension, the dissonance, the, the, the junk we're dealing with in life. In all the aspects of life where we don't want to be dealing with it, things that are intimate to us, our identity, our relationships, our self worth, our value, our contribution to this world. And, and Peter's saying, Man, I want you to love deeply, but you got to let love do a deep work inside of you. But when it does, because your love first, it's going to do something amazing in you. And then it's going to cause you to offer hospitality. It's going to cause you to offer this thing. Peter says, offer hospitality to one another. It's so beautiful. It's like, offer hospitality. Open the door. Do this, do that. And do it without grumbling. <laughs> Isn't it so hard for us? And some of us, like, it's like a badge of honor. It's like, yeah, I'm doing this, but I don't freaking want to, you know. It's like, oh, oh, thanks for sharing that because we couldn't tell, buddy, you know. <laughs> and it's the word, it's almost like do yourself and everyone a favor to stop, man. Count to 10, count to 100, maybe some of you count to a million, you know. Calm down. <laughs> Whatever is, God is, so, and I'm not making light of your because I've been, we've all been there, man. We've all been there and just ready just to like lose it, you know. Um, but I'm telling you, let love do this work inside of it and offer hospitality. Why? Because you are loved, you were built to serve. You and I were built to love others. Is there not nothing better when you're having a bad day? If you, if you had this, I, I, ho- I hope you've had this. I hope you get it today if you're having a bad day or feeling unloved. I hope it's happened this past week or the future week. When someone genuinely does something kind for you, doesn't that feel so good? Doesn't it? And somebody gives you something, they offer hospitality. Like, have you ever done that where you just, you hold the door, you're, you're there? It, it's always hard to, I always get stuck in these situations and sometimes it creates a little tension with Marie and I. I'll hold the door for one person or two, but I'll see somebody, and I'm like, dang it, they're like 100 yards away. And I know everything practically inside of me is probably like, go, because all I'm doing is killing the air conditioning or whatever. Door, I'm open, but I made eye contact, and I'm like, dang it. And so I'll I'll hold the door, because I know the one time it's going to be like, hey, Jeremiah, I go to your church, and I'm like, oh, I knew that, you know? And I'm like, it'll be the time that I, I, like, slam the door and forget it, and that person's like, ain't ever going there again, you know? So you hold it, and then you're, like, waiting forever, but doesn't it feel good? 
Or when there's like an amazing piece of dessert and somebody offers to split it with you or even better yet, give it to you. That sound good? Because isn't that the worst one? Oh, the one piece of dessert left, you know, and I was going to get it. Like, but offering this hospitality or, or, or the things that really matter the most. Like when you're really hurt and you need this. There, there's something so beautiful about this. I want to show you a picture of uh, Buddy Harry Blaker, who can't be here. He was going to be on stage. He got a couple other friends that are coming up that are serving just to kind of hear their heart because uh, he, he wiped out in a bike accident uh, on a mountain bike. Uh, so be praying for him. But, but I got this picture of Harry, and I, I wanted to show you. He, you guys know him, don't you? He's like six foot 11, almost. <laughs> Big dude, nicest guy in the world. He's got a joke. He's got more jokes than uh, like anybody ever. And, and he was so welcoming and loving. And it's, it's amazing, Chris, because I remember you saying, Chris came in. By the way, I want to tell you something. Uh, Chris came in, and we started a Bible study. Uh, we weren't able to totally read the Bible because we did it with, there was line dancing going on, but we did fellowship, man. It was amazing, and so we're having another Bible study, and you can get a hand, hand up from Chris, but you were sharing this to the staff. Chris came in to our Kensington staff from all of our campuses, and he shared his testimony. Is that cool or what, man? I was like, so proud of you, dude. And you're saying how loved and accepted you felt, and I'm like, when you see this guy, this guy's the one that makes you feel like a million bucks. You're like, I can do anything, you know, when you're done seeing him. And it's just amazing to see that. This reality of when people serve us, when Harry serves us, when, when, when you all, when we serve one another, we're transferring and helping transform this beautiful idea of love. And so I want to invite up just a couple of friends, Hannah and Christian. I don't know if you guys can come up here and uh, we'll grab some stools for you guys. And there's two mics up there. So yeah, come on up. Man, give them a hand. I just want you to hear from them for a moment. Oh, thanks, Grace. I'm going to pop up, and I just, I, I just want you to hear from them just for a quick second, because we're talking all about serving today. Thank you so much. You guys can just pop a squat down here. So um, I love that. And so this is Christian. Uh, this is Hannah. So and um, so I get that. Every time we set out stool, sometimes I feel like we're like way over here, you know. Um, but it's been amazing. We're just talking about this idea of like loving and serving. So I, I'd love just to just share with everybody just kind of like where you're serving right now in this ministry. Security and you know, coming to Clarkson uh, was about eight years ago. Uh, you were at the high school then and you know, I just moved to Clarkson and yeah. I came in and everyone says, wow, what do you want to do? And what do you want to do? And I was like, man, you know, and I felt a strong connection that I just didn't want to just be here as sitting in a the chairs and just hanging out. I, I wanted to be part of a big community and yeah. not just living in Clarkston. I wanted to just be part of this awesome family that I saw every day. And looking around, I thought, man, you know, these are like my sisters, my brothers, my aunts, my mothers. And this is what drove me here to be so into what everyone was doing. And I've been on the greeting team, the food team, but now my home is in security. And but what's so fun about it, all of my friends at security, we're brothers. We're brothers every day. We're not just brothers when, we, when we're here on Sunday. We're brothers every single day of the year. And that's what I get out of everyone here. I'm your brother. We, not have, we may not have the same mother, but I'm your brother. <laughs> I'm your brother whether you want me to be or not. I'm your brother when you're upset. I'm your brother when you need a friend to talk to. I have some friends in here that, you know, uh, they're bad brothers, but I still pray for them. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Keeping it real but, up here, man. But, like you know, what Jeremiah is saying, this, this whole community is, is not just for me. It's for all of you. There's so many different ways to serve. And you can serve just by being here one Sunday a week, one Sunday a month, two Sundays a month, whatever you want to do. Just do it with your whole heart because this is what led me. God had a plan for me and still does. He's still working on me. And he can work on all of us through different missions. And that's what's really important, and that's why I'm here. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hannah, what about you? Where do you, where do you serve and what's it like? I for? serve in kids ministry in K-Kids um, in the nursery, and I absolutely love it. It's always where my heart has been and where God has called me to be. And I just, I encourage everyone out there to, if you feel an urge and like, just get out there, serve and do what you're called to do. And like the nursery, it's not just something where you feel good. It's like you're serving the parents too. Um, you're helping them like want to bring their kids in and like 
getting to know them and building relationships with them. And yeah, I and it's you're all and I love the verse where you, it talks about serving on to the Lord and not doing it just because it it feels good. That's awesome. That's and yeah, I just um, love where I serve and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Oh man, thanks for serving. Isn't that awesome. Hey, I want to pop a slide up if we could. I want to show you guys a little bit. There's a, a opportunity when you are oh, you're okay. You guys can stay there. Uh, we put up that, that text to serve slide. I want you to have an opportunity to take your phone out. And uh, here's the cool thing. You may think, oh man, here comes the high pressure moment. I just want to start the conversation with some of you that haven't had a chance to serve. Yeah, that's Sean Carter. You look good in there, by the way. But Kelly makes you look good. Sorry, buddy. It ain't you. So you can forget about bragging about yourself. So, uh, but this idea here is just text the word serve to that number, 947. Pull your phones out. Pull your phones out. Come on. Come on, in the Michigan half. Well, you're fine. I'm just kidding, man. I, I, it's backwards. Dang it, he turned it backwards. Sorry. No, do the, just start a comment. Just hear what's available. What could we do? What kind of things maybe could we, could we serve in? It's so cool, man. This is custom to Clarkston. Uh, Nicole, uh, who's leading our guest experiences, will text you back and show you opportunities. So I just want you to start the convo. Some of you are giving cards. You can go to the hub, fill it out. Because I'm telling you, it, it's Christian, like what you're sharing. And Hannah, it's awesome, isn't it? Man, you get to know yes. people and you bond together. And, and look forward to seeing everyone every Sunday. Absolutely, man. And the kids see a familiar face too, uh, which is nice. A hundred percent. Because no matter where you're at, whether I'm in California, visiting my grandkids, believe it or not, I'm 63. <laughs> Shut up, dude. You look good, man. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I like so. That. You know, it's, when I get, come home, I'm so anxious to come back home. And this is home. So, oh. you know, whether I've been in the hospital before, I'm always searching to get back home. And yeah. This is home. That's awesome. I just also love, um, I look forward to working in the nursery every week. I look forward to seeing those kids and just building a relationship with them and the parents. And it's just something I enjoy doing. And I also, I feel the Lord calling me to do it. So I think this is unbelievable. Man, I, I, I love you both. Thank you so much for sharing what you're doing. And why you're doing it. Give him a big hand. Give Christian the hand a big hand, man. I, I, I'm telling you, I want you to do that. The, the being able to text in. Who, who hasn't had a chance to text yet? Into there real quick. Be honest. I know. Look at my, Maria just goes, cheer on my eyes. I'm telling you, man. I just want you to, here's what I want. I just want you to be able to experience what Christian's talking about. Like, like he did, like he had to go into the hospital like a few months back and he had people on the security team checking on him and loving on him and caring about him. And like, we're supposed to be like that. Do you know in the New Testament, over a hundred times, it talks about this idea of like offer hospitality to one another. It says, love one another, serve one another, forgive one another, uh, cry with one another, like pray with one another, all these things. And, and the reality is that you can't decouple when you look at the gospel is the one another, like, we're supposed to be that way. And there's something beautiful about being able to serve together, too, because you're on mission together, and you're making a huge impact. And so I, I don't. I'm just being a little so I don't want you to feel high pressured, but I, I do want you to know this, man. I don't want you to miss this opportunity. This is an incredible opportunity to experience God's love. Like Harry Blaker, who were, here's, think about how cool this is. Here he is, he stands at the door, he greets, he loves people, he's a big, gregarious guy. He's using his gift to love people in an incredible way. And, and Chris, you felt, you walked in knowing, saying, you said this, so I'm not making up words. He said, sometimes people look at me and they judge me. But when you walked in this place, you didn't feel judged at all. You felt loved, didn't you? Harry was part of that. And now we get to pray for Harry, we get to check on him. Chris and his family and Trudy and their kids are feeling more loved and welcomed and connected here. And it came from serving. What if Harry wasn't here that day and we had somebody there that wasn't doing the without grumbling part. They were kind of grumbling at the door, you know. Like, think about what would have happened. Maybe he would have turned away. Like, this is a beautiful opportunity that we get. Love each other. Peter says, above all, love one another deeply. Love each other deeply. Why? Because love covers so such good news. Covers over a multitude of sins. It does a redemptive, beautiful work. And he says, when that work that love's doing in you, when it does its work, you can offer hospitality to one another and you'll do it without grumbling because the Holy Spirit will be working in you in a powerful way. 
This, and then the goodness of God will be flowing out of this place, man. People that are hurt and lost and confused and need a home and need to be part of a community can hear about, what's that place Kensington Clarkson I hear about? I hear that people are amazing there, right? Don't you want that to be said of us? Not to be said of us, man, they're really uptight and mean. <laughs> like, no, no. We want the opposite to be said. Well, that happens when we let Jesus do a work. I, I thought it'd be beautiful today if we, we did this. So I, will you stand with me? We're gonna pray together. Davey and them are gonna lead us in a beautiful song called Reckless Love. But I want us to pray today this, here and online for people that couldn't be here today, maybe rewatch it later that we would ask humbly, we'd say, God, will you do a work of love in my life? Will you let your redemptive, patient, good, beautiful, strong, unbelievable, full of hope, full of grace, full of mercy, love, work in my life, right? Who doesn't want more of that? I mean, I want that. And can you imagine, can you begin to dream with me? What does that look like in the closest, most personal relationships you have? right now? What does that look like in your family? What does that look like in your community? What does that look like in your life, in your hopes, in your dreams? That love will look like something you've never seen. So let's pray and ask God to do this, this work of his reckless love. Father, we ask you, Lord, when Peter says love deeply, God, it comes from a place of being deeply loved. I pray that you just please move in our hearts, Jesus, that we would be a people of love, God, that love would be flowing out of this place, that it is no longer even us that's living, but you, Jesus Christ, your risen power, your goodness, your grace moving inside of us. I pray when people leave here, God, even there, there's a compelling in their heart where they want to serve, they want to give, they want to do. Father, we do this, but we do it from a space and a place in our hearts that your love has worked. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit please work in us now as we stand, as we worship Jesus here and online. Father, let your love do its work. And when it does its work, God, that we might offer, they have like this outpouring of goodness and grace and serving that comes out of us, God. God, may you do your work. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said, amen.
kick down, lie you all tear down, coming after me. Come on, sing that out. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Davey didn't even have much sleep last night. I just want to tell you guys, you're like burning the stage to the ground, dude. I, for Jesus is what I love about your heart, man, and grace, and all of you this morning. Dude, I love your energy. The drummer and I, like, the, you're the amazing. And I, I, don't, I don't even mean it like this. I'm just saying the work that Jesus is doing in us. Isn't it cool? Can you imagine if they decided to not serve us today and allow God's grace to move through their life? They're offering hospitality to us in a sense, right? They're offering this to us. And I want to tell you, this, this is where it's at. If you're, if you're wanting to go deeper and to make more friendships and to, and to see in you are fearfully and wonderfully made you beautiful gifts, I just want to encourage you, man. Text to serve. They have an opportunity to, to go deeper in your faith, to love one another, to care for one another in a beautiful way that we can continue to grow and be this super bright light in this community, man, that G, if people know that Jesus is working and alive here. Does that sound good? Like, that's what I heart, that's my heart desires. So we love you. Stop by the hub. Man, do the tax thing to serve um, because God is not done. I'm convinced he's just getting started. So God bless you. Have an incredible day. We love you. Bye.